Yeah, so I am here today with Lauren. Lauren, how are you doing today? Hello, I'm okay. I'm a little bit drenched. So if you are watching, if you can see my curly hair, I'm a curly girl. So any kind of moisture hits it, it goes a bit crazy. So I apologise. I look a bit of a mess today. You don't, don't worry. My my hair has the same problems uh, as yeah, well. You can relate. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you in, Lauren. Thank and, you for inviting um, me. When I thought about the conversation with episodes, having journeyed a little bit with you along your story you you were like top of my list of people in the church who I want to get in conversation and mm-hmm. get your story you're new to faith in the last in the last two years yeah um and I'm I'm really excited about your story and what God's done and I'm excited for people to hear it because it just is is so much about who we are as a church the kind of people that we're trying to reach um, and just what God has done in your life is so incredible. Yeah. Um, so let's let's get into it. Um, okay. Tell us a bit about life growing up, where you where you grew up, how okay. it was. Was it a Christian background, that kind of thing? Well, I'm Hales Owen, born and bred. Uh, I've lived in the same house my whole life, except when I've been traveling around. Um, re- uh, Religion-wise, I wouldn't say, I'd say I'd always been kind of agnostic. Um, my parents aren't religious in any sect. They weren't particularly Christian. But I was in the era of school where we would sing hymns at school. So that's a very fond memory of primary school, um, singing hymns in the morning assemblies and things like that and doing the nativity play every year. Uh, they did put me in the choir, though. I'm not sure why, because I don't really have a great singing voice. But, yeah, um, I, I don't really recall any kind of religious religiousness in the upbringing really I always had some kind of feeling there was something um, and that definitely came more apparent as I grew up in, into teenage years I started to think oh what if there's more but as a child there was not really I didn't go to church or anything like that I wasn't brought up in a Christian household so yeah that's it really <laughs> it's not very exciting <laughs> so how did you end if you're hell's home born born and raised how, tell us tell us a bit about your traveling and you because you're all over the world and, yeah. and how do you end up in doing that well i've actually really only been traveling probably the last sort of four four or five years before that i was very much a home body okay. and i i actually worked in an office job for over 10 years before i decided to change things up a little bit and go traveling I think it just got to a point where I had quite a bit of low mental health and a lot of it did stem from my work situation and some personal circumstances. And then I just thought, I actually decided to travel just as COVID was coming in, which was arguably not the best time. But I thought, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. So I, when COVID was happening, I think because I was working from home a lot, we couldn't go into the office or anything. I just had more time with myself. And during that time with myself, I was thinking, do I really want to be doing this the rest of my life? Or do I want to actually go out and do something different? I, You know, I had friends doing a lot more exciting things than me. And so I decided, well, at the time I was studying languages, I was studying Japanese and Korean. And I thought, oh, maybe I can see maybe going there um unfortunately japan had closed its borders so it left me with south korea as the option which okay. turned out to be the best thing that happened to me most to be people honest. when they go traveling like backpack through europe do you know yeah. what I mean? go <laughs> exotic sunny beaches you chose korea yeah I, I was thinking because i wanted to work at the same time right. and i know that they have they had quite a good english teacher program and i thought well that's a way for me to see the country and work at the same time and get an income because I didn't want to go from I had some savings behind me but I didn't want to go from 12 years of an income solid income to just Mm. nothing because I was a bit too anxious about doing that so I took a job in Korea in teaching over there um, and I ended up living in a very very rural village town in the middle of nowhere Uh, even the Korean people were like I don't know where that is where is that? Um, wow. Luckily, it had a train, so I could get to the cities quite easily. That's quite a big jump to go from like Hales Owen oh, yeah. to rural town in South Korea. Oh, yeah. That was must have been quite the transition then. It was, and I think it really tested my character. I think it really changed a lot for me and made me realise how strong I am. Um, but yeah, it was 
it was a completely different world. And I was the only person that was not Korean living there. So it was it was an experience. It, it was wow. lovely. And I, I had a really an amazing experience. The school that I worked in, I had, I've got friends that I worked with that I still stay in touch with. The kids were amazing. I absolutely loved working with the kids. Um, but yeah, the town was, it was a real culture shock mm. because my Korean, imagine. my Korean now after years of studying it is still like conversational at best. So back then when I first went there, yeah, it was a it was a struggle. Right. And your yeah. husband is South Korean. He is. Is that where you guys met? Then? We met in Korea. Yeah. So he actually lived in Seoul, so the main city. So that would it, it was quite a test because we wouldn't be able to see each other in, unless it was the weekend because I wouldn't be able to get there and back easily. It was about two and a half hours on the train to get to Seoul, and he visited me in my little village a few times. And he just couldn't believe that I was living in such a tiny, tiny rural place by myself. Um, so usually when we met, I would go to Seoul because it was just, it's obviously more exciting. It's a lot more things to do there. Yeah. So yeah, it was, that's, that's why it all changed my life. And you've traveled around together. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's a tattoo artist. Is he that is. Right? Yeah. He's a tattoo artist. He has worked in Berlin before. So he said to me, you know, eventually it might be a good idea for us to visit Berlin and maybe we can move there if we think about it in the future because, as I was saying, I've said this to you before and when we've talked, um, being an international couple is quite hard to figure out where you're going to be next. Um, and especially because he's not European, we're not, you know, it's harder for him to meet criteria to come and live here. So... Berlin ended up being a choice where we would go and visit um, and eventually we're going to move there. So it's quite exciting. Yeah. 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 yeah and you're going to be moving to Berlin and we're going to, we're going to miss you. Yeah. I'm going to miss here as well. A but, lot, a lot. Yeah. It's quite sad. It's, it's sad and exciting at the same time. And yeah. you, you're going to stay part of our online community, Definitely, staying yeah. engaged and, and visiting. And, and that's the beauty of where we're at now as a church is that, and I know we're going to hear how you first engage with us online and through yeah. YouTube and stuff. And so, um, and I think you've got so many stories to tell. What I, what I'd love to get into is just your story of of finding Jesus. Yeah. Um, and so, you, you know, we've we've talked about what life was like before Jesus. Just give us a little bit of a picture of perhaps some of the things that were impacting you, you know, you're traveling, mm. you're moving around the world, doing all this exciting, fun stuff, but there was some other things going on as well, wasn't there? Yeah, so as I said, the, the main reason I wanted to kind of do a complete overhaul of my professional life was the job that I was in was causing me a lot of mental issues, mental health issues, um, a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, Um at that time, I was going through some kind of counselling um, and it had to be online at this point because it was COVID. Um, and that did help me to an extent. Um, it definitely helped me to like put things into a better perspective than from an anxiety point of view where everything just seems like it's the end of the world. Um, and alongside that kind of thing and counselling and like professional help, I was trying holistic ways of trying to help myself um, and obviously this is pre-finding Jesus um, so for me what that meant was what I'd always thought was there's something else out there I'm agnostic and I think that I don't know I, I don't want to say that I was influenced by social media in that sense but I do think there's a big presence on social media and especially in the groups that I was in the circles that I was in and it was all kind of new age spirituality so things like crystal healing and tarot cards which I did mention briefly in my testimony before so I was using those techniques as well that were said to promote calmness and you know put your um, worries out into the universe and you can manifest the life that you want by doing these techniques and it's really opening yourself up spiritually to this thing that is the universe and then you do these sort of I want to say rituals that so sounds a bit witchcrafty I guess <laughs> a few rituals and then you're supposed to be able to manifest the life that you want so I was following these things to try and like improve my life and do all these things um 
And at the same time of doing those, while I will say some things did materialise that I wanted to, like I managed to go to South Korea and I had a really great time, I was getting negative things as well. So I was suffering really bad anxiety attacks still. So I was getting what I wanted, but I was kind of paying a price at the same mm. time, if that makes sense. And I was getting really bad sleep paralysis. And I don't want to get really technical and dive too deeply into sleep paralysis. But especially on, on social media, there are sort of jokes about the sleep paralysis demon that comes. And a lot of people see something when they're, they're experiencing sleep paralysis, and it's usually not very nice. It's not usually like... A, a nice angelic looking person that comes yeah. to visit you. It's normally something shadowy and dark and makes you feel on edge. In in my personal experience, um, when the sleep paralysis was at its worst, which was at the same time I was doing these new age spirituality rituals, if you like, I would it would usually be, it would be I'd sleep on my side and I would always feel something either sitting on my bed, sometimes touching me. I felt a hand in my hair before. It, 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 and it feels real to the point mm. that when I was able to move, because obviously paralysis, you're not, you can't move. When it, I was, I'd come to and I could move, I first thing I'd do is touch it. And I'd be so scared to turn around in case I thought there was someone there. And there never was. And... I just thought, oh, is this my anxiety? Is this just stress? What is going on? And it was only later on down the line I thought, maybe this is this is the price I'm paying for doing these, you know, putting myself out there spiritually and sort of like opening these rituals that you do in this in the new age spiritual world is make yourself open and vulnerable. And you're supposed to have these crystals around you that are supposed to protect you, but I don't think I, I don't know. It, it, I can't categorically say that that is exactly what caused it, but I, there was a. It happened at the same time. It was on the same kind of timeline for me. I started doing these practices, opening myself up spiritually. Please help me, anyone come in, invite invite anyone in, wow. basically. And this is coming from a girl also who is a real wimp and cannot watch any horror movies. Mm. And I was there going, yes, please, spirits, anyone come and wow. help me, help me. And, you know, that to me is just opening your door and, you know, anyone could come in. How do you know that they're, they're good? How do you and know that, they're on your side? It must have been quite terrifying then for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. What things did you do to try and break that, stop that? Uh, well, the only thing I knew how was other New Age tactics. Like, well, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Maybe I've used the wrong crystal. Maybe I need to speak to someone who knows a bit more than me, you know, like a a spiritual master of something or other and, you know, all this type of thing. And I tried everything. I tried like Reiki, healing and all the line up your chakras and all this. So, I mean, I can, as, as I say, I can only speak personally and there's no shade to those people that practice that um are people have had different experiences than me but from from my personal experience it's the only thing I knew how to do was other new age tactics and nothing worked I was like saging the room with the wow. incense and everything and saying all these mantras and I, it, it was it was nothing worked nothing worked at all and I just ended up I, I was still getting sleep paralysis in Korea um so much so I thought that my the bed that I slept on was haunted or something because it was very old and I thought okay I'll just sleep on the floor and for a whole year pretty much I pulled my mattress down onto the floor and slept on the floor because I had such bad sleep paralysis when I was there wow <laughs> it's like you know what I'd rather sleep on the floor and get some sleep and then sleep there and and have this sleep paralysis I don't know why it wow. happened that way but that's the experience and so is this the thing that like catapulted you to looking into Jesus like how do you yeah. how do you end up from sleeping on your floor because you're so scared of this sleep paralysis yeah. to exploring who Jesus is well I think when I was in Korea I kind of masked my anxiety about it because I was thinking I'm having such a good time this is like such a great experience I, I kind of like tried to bottle up the sleep paralysis thing and be like it's okay that I'm experiencing it because I'm having such a good time at, at all the other time of, while I'm here. So I didn't really do any action about it when I was in Korea. Um, when I came back 
to the UK, I started I started thinking, you know, maybe it's... I, I, I didn't take anything with me to South Korea in terms of New Age spiritual stuff. I didn't have any crystals or tarot cards or anything. So I couldn't... I didn't practice anything while I was there. But when I came back, I was thinking, yeah, maybe it's time to get rid of some of this. I don't think this is doing anything for me anymore anyway. It's just kind of gathering dust and these crystals aren't doing what they're supposed to do and protecting me or anything like that. So I just thought, okay, maybe get rid of some, but I won't get rid of all of them because I'm not ready to let go of it all yet. I'll just get rid of some. And then we were going to Germany at that point. Um, me and my husband, we'd just come back from Korea. We were in the UK for one month and then we went to Berlin for a month and then we came back to the UK afterwards just to give you a bit of a timeline. So just before we went to Berlin... Um, I got rid of a bit of my stuff and then I thought, I'll see how I feel and then I've still got some left if I come back and feel okay to do it or not and that's it. And then I went to Berlin and then that's when Jesus intervened and he was like, actually, I know what can help you and it's me. <laughs> and so yeah. tell us, how does Jesus intervene? Did he bang on your bathroom door? Yeah, like, yeah well, was it was it? almost like that actually because... Um, with the Airbnb we were staying in, my husband had gone to meet his friends and I wasn't feeling particularly good that day. I'd, I also suffer migraines as well. So I'd been suffering with a migraine and I'd feeling a bit down and I was like, oh, well, I don't know where we're going to be again with this like, we're international couple. Where are we going to go next? And all these things on my mind and anxiety was creeping up again. And I had actually experienced one of the worst sleep paralysis episodes while I was staying in that Airbnb in Berlin. Um, so much so, I woke my husband up and he was like, Whoa, what was going on? Um, it was awful. And it, it it was just such a strange sensation. I was sitting just sitting by myself and I was had the TV on, but I wasn't watching it. And I thought, just sitting there with my own thoughts. I thought, you know what, I'm going to make a cup of tea. Very British of me <laughs> in the evening. I just thought, oh, let's have a cup of tea. So I went to stand up, make a cup of tea. And I just thought, I just had this message and I, I don't want to say it was a passing by thought because it was like someone yelling in my head why don't you read the bible and this is coming from someone who never grew up christian apart from singing hymns at school we, i didn't really i knew a bit about the bible just from the, that kind of up, upbringing but i'd never been to church no i had no influence outside influence no one dragged me to church no one talked to me about going to church no one said no one had a conversation to me about Jesus. You know, no one influenced my decision to read the Bible except this message in my mind that said, why don't you read the Bible? And I just thought, where did that come from? So I made my tea and I thought, well, I can't go out and buy a Bible. I don't know where to go and it might be in German and I can't read German. So I just got, got my laptop. Okay, there's got to be some online, surely. Looked and I got the NIV version and I just started at Genesis and started reading and I was a bit confused because I was thinking this is a bit more difficult than I thought. I didn't realise the Bible was so big. That's probably very ignorant of me to think. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise it was so long. I didn't realise it was lots of many, you know, many books put together. Um, so that's how little knowledge I had on Christianity and Jesus and the experience I had. And I, I just really want to reiterate, I had no one influencing me to find Jesus. No one, I, I, I was... I wouldn't say I was against Jesus because he was quite in, he's quite involved in the New Age spirituality world. A lot of people say, you know, he's a master and all this. So I wasn't against Jesus, but I was definitely in a, a space where it was against kind of religion, organized mm, religion. It was yeah. more about being free and practicing what you want. So there was definitely, I had no, no one telling me, well, why don't you look at Christianity? It just came to me very wow. randomly very strongly and I thought well I can't ignore this and and then I was very confused as I said about reading this bible and I was thinking oh, I just don't understand this and I don't know what messages I'm supposed to get from the bible and I'm reading it from just front to back cover and maybe that's not the best order to read it in and then I knew I was coming back to the UK because we're only in Berlin for one month so I looked online oh, what if there's churches near me in Hales Owen? I was going back to my parents' house and I found Life Central Church and I thought, oh, let me have a look at it. And I think I might have dropped you an email around that time when I was in Berlin saying, oh, can I come and look at the church? I, I really didn't know what was the protocol. <laughs> like, how do you get involved with going to a church? Do you just turn up? Do I have to book an appointment? I have no idea. 
Um, and then you just said, come along to a service. And then the rest is history. And I came along and everyone was, I, I must have looked lost, I guess, on the on the first day. I was kind of hovering outside and the lovely welcome team was just guiding me. And I was, okay, yeah, come and get some tea and coffee. And I thought, oh, this is lovely. Get some free <laughs> coffee. And it was just an amazing experience. And, you know, I would Life Central Church has been Piv- like pivotal in my journey to finding Jesus even more and like exploring my faith because if I was just left by myself with the Bible I don't think I would have grasped the the messages that Jesus was trying to tell me mm-hmm. he would have told me and probably in another way eventually but I think I needed I needed the community aspect as well because it helps if I was just there by myself I probably would have got very lost and very confused so it's so good Lauren. yeah <laughs> and it, like i'm going to be careful not to go into preachy mode but yeah. what i love is like you keep saying no one was talking to me no one was influencing me but this just this sense of jesus and like jesus says i stand at the door and knock mm-hmm. and it's like this sense of jesus just gently knocking on the door of your life going hello I'm i can here. help yeah yeah and like i just i just love that and then, like, you Googling churches in yeah. Hales Owen. And, like, yeah. we've done a lot of work to make sure we get to the top of that list. Online presence, yeah. So that the people like yourself who are seeking out God and God, Jesus is knocking at the door of their life. We want to be there when Jesus knocks yeah. at the door of their life and say, we can help you. Mm-hmm. And tell me, just, did you did you watch us online before you came yes. in person? Yeah, I was like, oh, let me see the vibe. Oh, they've got it online. That's cool. That's cool. Because to me, in my mind... I was so out of the church loop, I guess. It was like wooden pews, someone standing at the, I don't know, what do you call it, altar? I don't know what it's called. Standing at the front like that and just preaching and I'd be having the Bible in my lap and follow along. I was thinking, oh, well, I'll just Google it anyway because, you know, I'll I'll be open-minded. I'll go along and see what it's like. And then I saw Life Central Church and it was completely different to what I thought. And, you know, you've got amazing musicians, amazing singers, amazing team, tech team, the whole vibe of the place, it just matched what I would look for in a community kind of vibe. I thought, oh, I can see myself going here every Sunday. If that, I'd go more if you if you did more services in the week. But yeah, I, I watched online and I was like, yeah, I've definitely got to go when I go back to the UK. So just indulge me for a little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like you're, you get up the, that Sunday morning, first time you come to church. Yeah. You wake up, you get ready. What are you, what are you thinking and feeling? Because so many of the listeners to mm-hmm. this will have been going to church for a long time, um, and so won't resonate with that walking yeah. into a church building for the very first time or mm-hmm. the first time in a long time. What What were some of the the feelings that you are going on that morning? Um. Anxiety, <laughs> for sure. I'm an anxious person anyway. Um, I would say I was a, I was just a bit, I was going by myself, firstly, so it wasn't like I could mingle in with the little group that I was going with, so I was just by myself. Um, and I was just worried that there was going to be already solidified groups of people there that I would find it hard to sort of merge in you know because everyone's got their little groups they all know each other from church and I'm just like hi I'm the newbie I don't really know much about Christianity I don't know much about Jesus I'm really baby Christian and you know I was just anxiety had anxiety that in a weird way that they wouldn't accept because I'm new (laughs) which sounds weird for a church that you'd think come in we want new people we want people to discover Jesus we want people to discover Christianity I don't know. That's probably my anxiety speaking in my mind. Like, oh, they won't, they won't, you know, I don't know enough. I don't know enough about Christianity to come to church, you know. It's really normal that people feel like that. Yeah, yeah, and I was thinking, oh, you know, and, but it was completely opposite when I, when I arrived. Uh, Everyone was so welcoming. People came up and talked to me. Have you got, have you got a drink? Get yourself a tea and coffee, which again, great perk for me, having some coffee first thing in the morning. Um, And just, yeah, just getting involved and everyone dancing and enjoying the music and, Everyone just, it was completely the opposite of what I'd set it up in my mind to be in terms of being welcomed, um, very welcoming and very high energy, which was good. Wake you up on a Sunday, <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> Coffee and a dance on a Sunday, you can't go wrong really. So tell me how being in church then helped you explore more of who Jesus because 
you know, we don't want to help people find and follow like Central Church. We yeah, want to help yeah, people find and follow course. Jesus. So just tell, I want to come back to the sleep paralysis stuff. Yeah, we haven't yeah. forgotten about no, that, no. listeners. <laughs> um, but like, ha, ha, what were just some of the things that stood out to you that just helped you follow, find Jesus and follow him? Yeah, I think learning more about Jesus from the Bible and how he was as a person. And because I just had an idea of Jesus. I didn't really know his miracles and what he'd done and things he'd said because I'd not really got that far into the Bible at that point. And because I was reading it from to, like, cover to cover. Well, if you start in a Genesis, you're not going to meet him a for a while. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I need to, I need to know a bit more. And that's where you learn more about Jesus because I've learned, you know, things that he's said, things that he's done, the miracles he's done. Um, and what others have said about him. And I think what I like about what the church does with this information as well is how you can apply parts of the Bible and specifically what Jesus did and how he how he acted and what he said, how you can apply that to your own life to just try and be even an ounce like Jesus. It will never be as perfect as him, but an ounce like him and we can do that in our daily lives and I think that's really important because it's not so much like you said the relationship with following Life Central Church it's the lessons that you can take away after church and you can then think about what can I do this week that we talked about and then continuously having that dialogue with Jesus which is also another thing I learned at church I thought okay pray on a Sunday at church and then that's my prayers done and I was thinking I can just have a conversation with Jesus whenever I want. I can just, I can be anywhere. I can just have that time and it's a personal relationship. And I think that's one of the things I also learned from church is actually it's it's a personal relationship with me and Jesus is the, the priority. And coming to church is just a chance for us all to be a good community and worship together once a week, twice a week sometimes. So, yeah. So good, Lauren. Yeah. It's really great. I'm just loving listening to you. <laughs> oh, don't. I'll waffle forever. <laughs> no, honestly, it's so good. And you, you're encapsulating so much of who we are as a church and, and, and the mission that we feel God's put us on is yeah. that, to help people find and follow Jesus. Let's come back to the sleep paralysis then. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, and like, since meeting Jesus, what's the story there? Yeah, I I was going to say something. I thought, oh, I didn't finish this story, actually. Um since that moment where I downloaded the Bible and I started reading, I, hand on my heart, have not had any more sleep paralysis episodes. On. Not one. So good. Not one. And I just thought, how have I struggled so long to find something to fix this issue? I tried all the things I thought would work, talked to people that I thought could help. The only person that could help was Jesus. And he... He came knocking at the door. <laughs> like He really said, hello in there, I'm the one, read the Bible, find the church, and you won't have to suffer anymore with this. And I, this is the thing that, this is the thing that was a pivotal thing for me to believe because after trying so many different things and it not working, I was thinking, well, there's got to be something in this surely because nothing else worked. And now, and this has been a year, two years now. So, and I haven't had one. And how regular was was sleep paralysis happening for you then? I would say at least two times a month, a couple right. of times a month. It was pretty regular. Yeah, and I mean, oh. they, they, they varied in severity. Sometimes it was just, I couldn't move. And then other times the worst is like, I could feel things touching and a really horrible presence. And mm. it was not good. Not and good. since that moment where you opened... The door of your life to Jesus gone. Nothing. That's so Nothing. incredible. What's the, that taught you about Jesus? Then what, what have you learned from that? He he is there for everybody, no matter what you're going through. Because I thought, you know, I've been to counselling. I've had professional help with dealing with stress and anxiety from a therapist. I've tried the things I thought that <laughs> the things that got me there in the first place. I thought could help me get out of it, which didn't happen. And. He's the one that, and like I said, I had no influence. It wasn't like, oh, okay, well, let me try Christianity next. I've got nothing else to try, you know. He came to me. So it wasn't me going searching for the next thing to help me. He came to me. So if I'd had influence, I'd think, okay, well, maybe that's why it's helped me, you know, I've thought about it. But I hadn't been thinking about Christianity at all 
for him to come to me. So what's taught is he's patient because it's took, I mean, I'm 34 now. So it took a long time to get to me. <laughs> he's patient. He'll wait until you're ready to open the door to him. He will be consistent. He'll stay knocking at that door and he will protect you and help. he'll help you no matter what you're going through. Even if you think it's the worst thing, he will help you because he helped me when nothing else did. Nothing else, so. I can't thank him. Every day I'm just like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for helping me. I can actually sleep and be peaceful and I haven't got to worry about this opening spiritual doors and inviting all these things in. He's just, I imagine him kind of just like a bouncer at the door. No, you can't come in anymore. <laughs> and he's the king of that. He's king, yeah. And, and when we first had this conversation in Costa in Hells. Yeah, I, would, yeah. I was almost banging the table going, that's because Jesus is the, is the boss, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, Jesus. no one's going to get past him. Yeah, uh, oh, it's so good, Lauren. And like, I've got goosebumps. I'm sure the listeners are uh, like, just rejoicing in what God's done and this is who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. And like, like for me as a, as a member of Life Central Church, like I, I'll often say like, it's not that we bring Jesus to people. Jesus is already at work in people's yeah. lives. Jesus was already knocking on the door of your life. We were just there, and and I almost picture like like God going, "Oh, there's there's little old Life Central Church. Here. They'll help you." Yeah and, yeah, and and for me as 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 part of this church, I want to be in that space where mm. where God trusts us with the Lauren Johns of this world yeah. and, and says, "Hey." I'm knocking on the door of her life. She's opened the door. I'm trusting her with you. Yeah, uh, and yeah. what I love is the, you know, the the website, the hosting team, the car park team, the guest services. Yeah, everyone. The, everybody has played a part in your story. Jesus is the one who knocked on the door. Jesus is the one who's done the transformation. Yeah. But there's a whole bunch of people that have that have helped. And and I love that. And what what I've enjoyed you know, because you you travel and and you 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 know you're here for a couple of months there, yeah. and you you know you got married in the last couple of years, and that's yeah, yeah. that's been a bit of a journey. And what I've really enjoyed is that you go in between like being an in person attender and being here when you're in Hell's Holland, but then when you're not, like I've seen on your Instagram, you you're taking photos and yeah. making notes and, and still joining online, and there's yeah. that hybrid approach and as we go into the future how's that gonna how's that gonna work for you what, what are you thinking the future will hold in that sense well I like the fact I'm a hybrid church goer. that sounds pretty cool doesn't it <laughs> um, yeah. yeah I think as I will be in Berlin then I don't want to not be involved with Life Central because I owe you guys a lot for helping me on my journey so I will be online. I'll be an avid online viewer. I'll try and comment more in the chat as well because I kind of just sit back and, and watch. But I will try and be a bit more involved. Um, and I will be coming back. So Christmas time especially will be really nice to come back for. Um, so I will be here occasionally when I am back in the UK. Um, but yeah, just trying to find a church in Berlin, I guess, that's a similar vibe can match the standard of Life Central. We'll have to see if that's possible. <laughs> I'm sure there will be. <laughs> so, yeah, just just keeping it keeping it going, um, reading my Bible. I, I, personally, I really want to try and find some kind of group that I can study the Bible with a bit. Um, that's one thing I, I really want to try and do because I do think that my Bible, I, I read the Bible, but I don't think I, I take enough from it and study the Word enough. So that's something I want to probably delve into a bit more whether I can find that in Berlin we'll see if not I'll try and find something online but that's, we have got some online connect groups you yeah know. <laughs> yeah well you know I might ask you to put me in touch with that because that would be really useful for me um but yeah just keeping and you know praying every day thanking Jesus every day attending church online I, I might do you know both like watch you guys online and German church in person we'll see Right. And it's so, so good, Lauren, that like hearing hearing you just saying that of like, I want to get into a group and get to know the Bible more. Because all of us are on a journey of following yeah. Jesus. It's like we find Jesus and then we follow him. And it's not like you make a decision to follow Jesus and suddenly all of all of the, the you know, the stuff is downloaded and it's like yeah. an app and suddenly yeah, you're, exactly. you're a Christian person. It's like, it's a journey and we're all on that journey. And, and I want to encourage you to keep going. And like, 
I really sense listening to you, like, I really sense God's got some big plans for you in your life and God's God's going to use you and your your story, the way you mm. are eloquent and the way that you are just seeing the way all, all of the pieces fit together. I, I'm really excited to see in, you know, 10 years time, what's God got done in your life yeah. and, uh, and how how's that gone and maybe we can all come on on a traveling journey together <laughs> yeah, with you yeah, we yeah. can all go travel in the world telling well, people about jesus i do want to say actually when i did share my testimony and i was baptized very exciting that was as well um forgot to mention that actually yeah baptism very nice i loved it um when i shared that story on my social media i had more than i thought <laughs> people messaged me and a lot of them had gone through something similar to me, not necessarily the sleep paralysis, but they'd gone from new age into finding Jesus. Wow. And I kind of sense this shift at the moment where Jesus is, I don't want to say targeting, but he is making moves Come in on. that kind of new age realm. Because there's been, I mean, also, I don't know if, like, can I mention celebrities kind of things here? Yeah, there's a, a tattoo artist called Kat Von D. Don't know if you're aware, familiar with her. Um, an American tattoo artist. She was also on TV. She's quite a well-known celebrity in that realm. Head to toe covered in tattoos. Looks very gothic. Kind of went the new age route as well. And she has found Jesus wow. the last year, I want to say baby Christian as well and she's like a mid summer baby Christian but she shares so much on her social media she's got such a huge platform and she's going from like saying about kind of new age modern day kind of things to finding Jesus and she was baptised she shared her whole story on social media and I thought oh that's really inspirational I'm, I, I want to share more as well because that's the other thing is when you share you actually create these bridges that you didn't actually knew existed so for example my friend Ellie that I come to church with I didn't even know she went to church before I didn't know she was Christian we had just never had that conversation which is seems crazy because it's one of your friends one of your best friends but it's just never it's never something I ever asked people to be honest and we went to <laughs> we went to a car boot sale and I said oh you know what I'm going to church for the first time this Sunday and she was like what we go to church. Me and me and her husband. Her and her husband. They go. We went to church. We go to church. We go to this one in Rowley Regis, but we we're actually looking for a new one. So let me know what it's like because we might come along. That's what I did, wow. and I had no idea. And that's only because I had the conversation about church and Jesus and Christianity that I even found that out about one of my best friends, which sounds terrible, but yeah, that's how it went. So I think using Jesus, using Christianity to expand and have conversations with people is really useful because people also can see, well, my life's a bit like that, which is really great with sharing testimonies, which hopefully I can do that today, sharing this story if you're having experienced anything similar or you know someone that is or someone that's into new age things and they're struggling right now. Um I, I have a feeling that Jesus is knocking on the door of New Age spirituality, though, recently. It's a, I can sense a shift, <laughs> which is good. Good news. Mm, come yeah. on. Come on. I love that. Lauren, thank you so much for You're being welcome. willing to come in today. And thank just, you. This has been such a, a rich conversation. I, I'm absolutely buzzing just hearing your story. And thank you for being so honest and vulnerable and willing to, willing to share okay. what God's... <laughs> God's done in your life. Thank you so much, Lauren. It's Thank been, you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure Thank having you. you on the Life Central podcast. If you have been affected or impacted by anything in this podcast, please do get in touch with us at Life Central Church via our website, lifecentralchurch.org.uk. Equally, if you feel like you have got a story to tell and you would like to feature on our podcast, we would love to hear your story. Get in touch with us again via the website. Well, thank you so much for downloading and taking the time to listen to the Life Central podcast. If you've loved it, give it a like and make sure you share it with your friends and on social media. Have a great day. 